Let's learn about gas exchange. Oxygen enters our lungs when we inhale. Carbon dioxide exits our lungs when we exhale. Oxygen travels from the lungs to the blood and is carried to the tissues. The tissues use oxygen for making energy. This process produces carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide moves into the blood and is carried to the lungs to be eliminated when we exhale. Before we can learn more details about gas exchange, we need to learn about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Dalton's law says that the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of each gas in the mixture. We can use a balloon to illustrate Dalton's law. The balloon is filled with air. Air is a mixture of gases, including about 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 0.04% carbon dioxide, along with some trace amounts of other gases. Let's say the total pressure inside of the balloon equals atmospheric pressure, which is about 760 millimeters of mercury. If air is about 79% nitrogen, then the pressure exerted by nitrogen in the balloon is 0.786 times 760 which comes out to 597 millimeters of mercury. In other words, the PN2, or partial pressure of nitrogen, is 597 millimeters of mercury. Likewise, if air is about 21% oxygen, then the partial pressure of oxygen is 0 0.209 times 760, or 159 millimeters of mercury we say that the partial pressure of oxygen, or PO2, is 159 millimeters of mercury. It is important to know that gas moves from an area of higher partial pressure to an area of lower partial pressure. Let's see how this works in the respiratory and blood systems. The PO2 inside of the alveolus of the lung is about 104 millimeters of mercury. The PCO2 is about 40 millimeters of mercury. The PO2 inside of the capillaries carrying deoxygenated blood surrounding the alveolus is about 40 millimeters of mercury. Oxygen diffuses from the higher PO2 of 104 to the lower PO2 of 40, so oxygen moves from the alveolus to the blood. The movement of oxygen into the blood increases the PO2 of the blood to 104 millimeters of mercury. Oxygen is then carried to the tissues. Along the way, the oxygenated blood mixes with some deoxygenated blood causing the PO2 to drop to about 95 millimeters of mercury. The tissue PO2 is about 40 millimeters of mercury. When the oxygenated blood PO2 of 95 meets the tissue PO2 of 40, the partial pressure gradient allows for the movement of oxygen into the tissue by diffusion. Oxygen travels from the higher to lower partial pressure. Since oxygen leaves the blood, the PO2 drops to 40 millimeters of mercury. The tissues produce carbon dioxide, or CO2, and the tissue PCO2 is 45 millimeters of mercury. The PCO2 of oxygenated blood entering the tissues is at 40 millimeters of mercury, which is lower than the tissue PCO2 of 45. Carbon dioxide follows its partial pressure gradient and diffuses into the blood. 
This causes the blood PCO2 to rise to 45 millimeters of mercury. Carbon dioxide is carried to the lungs. When carbon dioxide reaches the lungs, it meets an alveolar PCO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury. Carbon dioxide follows its partial pressure gradient and diffuses into the alveoli. This causes the blood PCO2 to drop back to 40 millimeters of mercury. Here's an overview of the entire process. Oxygen enters the lungs. The alveolar PO2 is 104, and the deoxygenated blood PO2 is 40. Oxygen diffuses into the blood, raising the blood PO2 to 104. The oxygenated blood PO2 drops to 95, and oxygen diffuses into the tissues that have a PO2 of 40. This causes the deoxygenated blood PO2 to drop to 40. Carbon dioxide produced by the tissues raises the tissue PCO2 to 45. The PCO2 of oxygenated blood entering the tissues is 40. This causes carbon dioxide to diffuse into the blood, raising the blood PCO2 in the deoxygenated blood to 45. Carbon dioxide travels to the lungs and diffuses into the alveoli, which have a PCO2 of 40 and carbon dioxide is expelled from the lungs during exhalation. We hope you have learned something about gas exchange and see you next time.